Hey guys, this is Pro Gaming 2008 and welcome to another video. Today we are going to review AMD's final single core processor, which is the AMD Athlon 64 4000 Plus, specifically the Socket AM2 variant. There are two variants for this processor. The first one is for Socket 939. This one was released in 2005. The Socket AM2 version which is the one we're using today was released in 2007 so this one is newer but the specs are different the socket 939 variant has one megabyte of l2 cache and runs at 2.4 gigahertz which matches the fx53 the socket am2 variant which is what we're using today has 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache so the cache is split to half but it only makes a 5% difference, so we're not going to get too much of a difference. But the clock speed is higher and it runs at 2.6 GHz. Think of this CPU being the Athlon 64 FX55. Even though the cache is different, it won't make, it won't make that much of a difference. The GPU we're using is an ATI Radeon X1600 Pro. We are also using 2GB of DDR2 RAM. For storage, we have a 40GB hard drive for the operating system, specifically Windows XP Professional, and a 160GB hard drive for all the games that we're going to test. I also added a fan to help the system cool down a bit because the Athlon 64 has a TDP of 59 watts and can heat up a bit because I'm quite worried. In core temp, the temperatures won't even show up. So I just added a fan just in case and it will also help with the cooling inside the computer. So the AMD Athlon 64 4000 Plus Revision F3 is for socket AM2, whereas at 2.6 gigahertz, it has 512 kilobytes of level two cache. Compared to the Athlon 64 FX55, it has a lower TDP of only 59 watts, mostly because the cache is lower and because it is a newer socket. And it was released in February of 2007. All right, so I booted up the machine and I'm just showing you exactly the specs of this computer in CPU-Z and in the system properties menu. You can see that the Athlon 64 is properly detected. I'm using two gigs of RAM in single channel, but I don't think that's going to matter too much in terms of performance. Something that might matter in performance is the GPU. The ATI Radeon X1600 Pro that I have is the 256 megabyte PCI Express variant, not 512 megabytes, not the XT, just the Pro 256 megabyte version. So we might turn down a lot of texture settings in games when we are going to benchmark. Before we test some games on this processor, I've just wondered if YouTube playback was good on a single core and it turns out that at 1080p60, just like on that NEC computer, it's simply too much to play at that resolution. I tried to lower the quality to 720p60 and it turns out that it still can't play. It performs worse than on the NAC PC and that is really due to the processor having only a single core. At 480p it is a lot better but I noticed some skips and pauses and once again this is due to the processor having only one thread. Apart from YouTube you can also do some basic things like doing Google images and you can also also search some basic things on Google just like I did I typed bonjour and it worked straight away now when I tried to benchmark some games starting with Half-Life 2 and Painkiller the frame rate is good I noticed some skips and pauses and that is again due to the CPU having only a single thread because this game is mostly multi-threaded because this is the updated Steam version which is more demanding and I did run into one severe issue the GPU might actually be thermal throttling because at some point after playing Half-Life 2 and Painkiller and other games the system would just crash and reboot
and then I started to feel a bit worried about what's going on on my computer and why does it keep crashing to figure out what's going on first I did run the Windows integrated RAM test. I inserted a Windows Vista DVD, ran the Windows integrated RAM test. It complete without any issues. I was like, yes, the GPU might be thermal throttling. So what I basically did is I took off the fan and put it right under the GPU so that it can help with cooling as seen here. And now all the games are benchmarked in this video ran without any crashes because the cooling of the GPU is now better. So for all the games that are benchmarked in this video, I'm going to put the name for each game and also which resolution and which graphical settings I've used for every game. Starting with Half-Life 2 and we'll finish off with Crisis.
is free. So that concludes the benchmarks for AMD's final single core CPU, the AMD Athlon 64 4000 Plus. Sure, it's not the fastest single core CPU that AMD made, but as if we count by date, this is really the last single core CPU that AMD has manufactured. So what is my feedback on the CPU? It ended up being good. Almost every game ran really great. 
with Crisis being the exception, but that's really due to the game being not optimized at all. Every other XP game ran pretty great, even Far Cry for example. And I decided to make this video, not just because we are going to upgrade the CPU soon, but also to show you what it feels to have the final single core CPU made by AMD. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on, like this video and share it with your friends. And stay tuned for more videos. Take care of you, stay safe, peace, bye.